this was about 1986, we noted that volatility was very low. And it, because of that reason, we predicted that gold was going to break out. And sure enough, it did. It moved to about five, $500 or a little more right after that. And that got us thinking and doing some work. And we found that 100% of the time, when option volatility moves to historical lows, the market will eventually make a large breakout. Now, that doesn't tell you when the market's going to break out. But we know that market is going to make a huge move. Okay? So what do we do? First of all, as we saw in our previous chart, we track all option volatility. We track all markets. We track all the volatility levels. Let me see if I can find that chart, and I'll sh show you our volatility charts that, that have that. Now we, we both have a volatility, we have a volatility chart book that we put out on a monthly basis and in our, uh, our newsletters will also contain this. But on the right, if you look at cattle market, that says one. That says one. Now that's a ranking of, we, we rank volatility from one at the lowest to ten at the highest. And this is, this is from January 1995. Cattle options were ranked one in volatility. They were at the lowest level they'd been in two years, and they were at the lowest level they'd been in six months. And what did cattle do right after that? Well, cattle had a large move, and we're going to see. I think, we, I think we have charts of that coming up. But when we see the ones, when we see the ones, we begin to concern ourselves because we're fairly certain we're going to see a large move in the market. When option volatility moves to two-year lows, watch out. That market is going to move. When is the movement going to occur? We let the market tell us because that movement can be anywhere from one month to three years. Three years. Now, let's, let's, look how, let's take a look and see how that works. Okay, actually, this is, uh, this is the cattle market so we were just talking about. But this is uh, actually this is a little earlier. This is back in 1994. This is in February of 1994. Top chart is a chart of option volatility, and we hit a new low in option volatility in April of 1994. Okay, and what happened? Well, what happened is cattle had been in a trading range for quite a while, and then it just took off and dropped like a rock. Just dropped like a rock. And what gave us the signal that that was going to occur? Again, very low option volatility, two year lows in option volatility. And what we do? What we do is very simple. We bracket the market. We put, we put a line under the lows and a line above the highs and let the market tell us what it wants to do by breaking out, by breaking out. Do we guess? Well, you could. You could. Now, some traders like to buy both a put and call in this situation. Nothing wrong with that at all. We prefer to let the market make its move. We prefer to let the market tell us where it wants to go by actually moving in that direction. So, so we don't get the best possible price, but then we have some assurance that the market is going to move in that direction. Okay, let's, let's look at some more examples of this. Uh, these charts just show how markets break out when they're in long trading ranges. And uh, the chart on top, the chart on the top right here, let's see if we can get this centered for you, is the coffee option market in 1994. And we recommended purchasing coffee options based on this chart and the breakout. We recommended coffee calls. We were in a multi-year consolidation. Option volatility had dropped to historical lows. And what did we do? Uh, we put a line above the highs, a line below the lows, and let the market tell us, tell us what to do. Now, every one of these other charts uh, below, with the exception of the gold market, which is on the bottom right, and we're going to see some more charts of that, is an example of what happens to a market that's in a long-term consolidation pattern with low volatility. They eventually break out and usually move at least 250%. Okay, Let's look at, um, again, here's the coffee market. And what alerted us to coffee breaking out? Well, what alerted us to it is coffee volatility dropped in April of 1994 to historically low levels. The market wasn't moving. Everyone said it couldn't do anything. What happens when that occurs? The market breaks out and makes a huge move. In this case, coffee moved up 250% in the next couple of months. A huge, huge move in coffee. What alerted us to it? Again, the lows in volatility. We go to the chart, 
and we see coffee is in this long-term consolidation pattern, just draw your simple lines above the highs and below the lows. It's very, very easy to do. But again, this is, the more, this is a more advanced strategy, and this is a strategy that should only be used if you have charts, now, whether they are charts that are sent to you um, or charts through your computer, you do <coughs> need volatility charts. You also, you also need um, technical charts of the market so you can see the pattern of the market. Now, let's look at the market that we think is going to be the next one to be the big mover. And it's definitely the one that we do not want to be selling options in. It's the gold market. And we just started talking gold and silver market for that example. Um, now, let's look at this chart first. Here is the, the upper charts are the option volatility charts of gold and silver. And they did break out initially. Now, this is, this is charts from uh, about a year ago when gold and silver made their first moves. Um, you can see option volatility was very low, but it's been trending lower over the last year. And gold and silver have been in a long-term trading range. Over the last two years, they have gone nowhere. They have gone nowhere. Okay. Now, what do we think will happen here? Well, what it, here's gold in 1979 in a similar chart pattern where gold moved again from um, about 